Hello everyone, I am Jan Bedell, the Little Giant Steps Brain Coach. Welcome back for this week's Brain Coach Tip. It's wonderful to have this vehicle where I can share with you the revelations God has given me about how to make the brain work better. Over the last 20 years, I have seen thousands of families incorporate this neurodevelopmental approach to life and see incredible results. I have seen frazzled parents become calm and proactive, and defeated kiddos finally feeling confident. My goal is to equip you with some brain-changing tips and techniques, as well as resources that can enhance your child's functional ability. The grief of having a child that struggles and not knowing how to help her is very familiar to me. Someone in the area of your influence may be crying out for help like I was, so please share the link to this podcast with your friends, family, and acquaintances. You just never know when you might be the link God wants to use so another family can get the help they are praying for. Now, let's delve into the subject of when touch or the tactile type stimulation is a problem for your child. Today, I want to introduce you a little bit to the neurodevelopmental profile. You know neurodevelopment, neuro means having to do with the brain, and development is how that person develops from the very low level of the spinal cord all the way to the cortex, the thinking part of the brain. I want to tell you a little bit about that profile as we look at the tactile system based on the nine levels that we work with here. The profile is divided into two main categories. The sensory input that comes mainly from touch and visual and auditory, and then the motor output. What does the brain do with those things that come in so that it can be coordinated, use fine motor and language? This developmental profile is what we use to help find the root cause of things. Now, if you went to a doctor and your child had this strange rash on them and you wanted to know, you know, what was going on there, if the doctor just called her a rash or put a label on, we'll just call this a rash, and wrote you a prescription and turned around and walked out, how would you feel about that? What you would want to know is what's causing this, what can I do to prevent it, what can I do to get rid of it, and all of those details, what's the root cause here? That's what we do with the neurodevelopmental profile. So I mentioned these two main areas, the sensory input and the motor output, they have six different areas that we look at in development. The tactile area, that's the one we're going to talk about today. The auditory, which I've talked about a lot over over time, and the visual. Those are the sensory inputs. And then the motor outputs, the fine motor, that's how if you can open a jar, button, zip, tie, write, all of those kinds of things with your hand. Then expressive language that starts from birth, like with a birth cry, and goes all the way to sophisticated conversation. And then gross motor, that's how is your brain organized. Now, our belief is that we have to have input to our brain before we can have output. That's why the sensory part of tactility is so very important. If you want to know more about the input versus the output, I would encourage you to go back and listen to podcast number three for more information about that. Not only are there six different areas on the developmental profile, there's nine different levels of development from one to nine. Each of these levels is dependent on a previous level. So if there's a glitch then in one of those levels, then there's a ripple effect of function on down the road. The categories are all like interdependent. I had one child that I worked with that his tactile system was really on overload all the time. He had such a hard time even putting on socks. He just hated socks. This family said half the time we have to just carry him to the car barefooted and get his socks on when we get to the place because he's having such a conniption fit over it. 
and they were treating it behaviorally. They said, you know, it's just a sock. What's the deal? But when your sensory system is overloaded, it really causes some pretty dramatic uh, effects. Like it can cause fear and it often causes pain, which, you know, we all want to avoid pain. So sometimes children do weird stuff like not put on their socks just because of this. When you look at the child through the neurodevelopmental grid, you're able to see them differently and understand what's going on with them. For instance, labels. Oftentimes, labels accompany this hypersensitivity to touch. Those labels could be as extreme as autism, or sometimes they're calling it sensory integration disorder, and each of those is just a list of symptoms. But when you look at it from the profile, you can find out where the root cause is. If you've listened to me very long, you know that our sponsor is Little Giant Steps. That stands for Little Neurodevelopmental Steps Equal Giant Strides in Academic Achievement. What we do at Little Giant Steps is help you find where the glitches are, either in our individual programs like advanced brain training for seven and up, or jumpstart for those that are six and under, or our in-person evaluations. We also have products like developmental foundations that gives you a place to start, which can take care of a lot of organization of the brain, and many things like that that are going to be on a handout if you want to take a look at that and get more details. The tactile system is very impactful for all the other function that we do as humans. The foundation of that, of course, is in the central nervous system. And then what happens is there's a brain-body connection. As the brain is stimulated, it starts to build those connections. But if there's some things that aren't working right, your function could be kind of like a sieve where you're pouring information in, pouring in information, and it's all leaking out. So we want to build a bowl. That's basically what we're doing in our developmental programs, is building a bowl where it can actually hold the information. These glitches in tactility can affect things like coordination. They aren't able to be very coordinated. It can affect their language ability or the articulation that they use by just being able to move their tongue. It can also affect their fine motor development or things like taste and textures, which makes it hard for them to, to eat things or they're becoming picky eaters. So as you can see, it's really a global effect. It's really been wonderful watching my granddaughter Kaylee, who's now five months old, she was born here at the house, and we've just watched this development all the way through from the spinal cord where she was just doing random movement to now where she's actually reaching out, holding things, turning over, all of those kinds of things. So as she's on the floor on her stomach, really getting information from her environment, the rough mats or on the carpet or on the tile, all of those things are feeding that tactile system so it normalizes and builds those connections. If a child has trouble with level two of the profile, which is their deep sense of pain, they might be too rough with their classmates and they don't even realize it. Get in trouble all the time for that. They could get hurt and you go, well, what happened? How'd you get that bruise? And they don't even know how that happened. Or they could be getting into other people's social space, which is often considered rude, but if they don't know where they are in space because they don't have those pathways built, then they don't know they're in other people's social space. The level one in most of the profile is just that very infant newborn stage. Like in tactility, it's Babinski reflex. This is something that I believe is integrated when a child is on their stomach and they're pushing with their toes and banging their feet against the ground. And it can have to do with balance later on and many other developmental things. You've got Babinski at level one, pain, 
that deep sense of pain. And that's totally different than this level three, which is the Gnostic or the light touch. Now, some people are very confused because their child is really having a problem with this light touch, but then he doesn't know where he got bruises. So that means neither one of these are well integrated so that the body is not recognizing it. That's where the socks and the hypersensitivity to different, you know, they won't wear certain clothes. They're just really bothered by anything that's light that touches their skin, basically wherever it is. Other symptoms are like they're too ticklish. They overreact to this light touch and jerk away from people. That can be socially an issue. They have to stop and adjust their socks all the time. And so their attention is drawn to that because, you know, that line is right over their toe. Or they can interpret any light touch as pain. The really wonderful thing about what we do is that we have answers for people. I met a lady one time that came to my booth and she was talking to me and we were talking about this issue of tactility and she said, you see this baby laying on my shoulder? And the baby was asleep, not moving or anything. She said, it's about to kill me that he's just here. And I thought that's just how everybody felt. So when people don't realize that something's off, then they just kind of tend to live with it. But I love the fact that we have answers and you don't have to live with these things forever. You know, I met with one family in an individual or in-person evaluation who had decided before they came to me to just do the Early Learning Foundations. That's our preschool program that has neurodevelopment built into it along with some math. They had done this for a few months before doing that in-person evaluation. I questioned them on things on the history form that included things like tactile issues, as it seemed like it wasn't even an issue anymore. And that's basically what they said. The answer was, he used to do that before Early Learning Foundations. Now, it's a whole different child you're looking at. And they'd filled out the history form before. Here's what DK from Texas, his mom, said when I asked her, she would jot down some of their experience. My husband and I had been going through the Early Learning Foundation's Level 1 program with our son for the past six months. In that time, he has grown more patient and more focused to the point that other parents, family members, and teachers have commented about his progress. Only three months into the program, his Sunday school teachers were repeatedly telling us I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. Though always a happy, good-natured boy, he was at times hard to contain and didn't want to participate in group activities with other children his age. After the first three months, his teachers noticed he would sit still at table activities with the other children and actively involve himself in the lesson. In addition to his interpersonal behavior, his number skills have blossomed and his attention span has dramatically increased. He is far more cooperative and his listening skills have improved greatly. He began the program as a four and a half year old child for whose behavior we often felt the need to apologize. Six months later, he is a five year old who receives praise and encouragement from those around him. Even strangers in shopping centers have periodically remarked at how well-behaved he is and how they wished more children behaved that way in public. We know he still has a long way to go, but without little giant steps, we can't imagine where we'd be today. It's so rewarding to hear things like that. Level 3 is called third dimension or your ability to turn like thick cardboard book pages that's basically what we look at at that level the trigeminal nerve is one of the largest nerves in the body it controls the eyes the nose the lips the mouth everything basically from the neck up is involved with the trigeminal and at level five we look at trigeminal and temperature the symptoms of this are people that just can't stand haircuts and they don't like to wear their glasses. 
they're unaware of food on their face. You know, you think, why aren't you wiping your face? Well, they don't even feel that it's there. They're unaware of the need for wearing a jacket oftentimes because they don't feel the cold. And sometimes they take showers or baths that are too hot. They just don't recognize that temperature. These are all things that with the right stimulation, the function of the individual can totally change. Just like at level six, when we look at the olfactory, which is the smell, the sense of smell. Some children are very sensitive to odors and they're distracted by that everywhere they go. They can't even go into a public bathroom because of the smell. They often have trouble with temperatures of food and they can become very picky eaters. If you don't smell well, you don't eat well typically either. There's a lot to do with eating and smell. Some parents have said things like they can't even be next to their friend in school because their markers smell so bad that they just make a big hullabaloo about it. At level seven and eight, we look more at the fine motor aspect of the tactile system. If it's been stimulated well, then the child doesn't have any trouble holding their pencil correctly or buttoning, tying. Their handwriting is coming along at that point. Their ability to open jars and do things opposite, using their hands in an opposite direction, is easy for them when their tactile system has been stimulated so that those pathways go all the way down to the fingers and hands so that they can function well. Well, one thing that you can do that we've found very effective is have the child hang from a bar. Now, when you put this on your list of daily activities, just put hang and see if you get any questions about that. It's kind of funny. Anyway, you want them to hang from a bar for twice a day for about a minute. Get up to where they can stay on the bar for a minute. And if you have monkey bars in your area, this is even better. This helps build the flexor muscles in the hand. It strengthens the upper body helps them know where they are in space. It raises the chest and gives oxygen to the system where the brain uses a lot of that oxygen. So it's a really good activity that you can do to help your child's handwriting instead of just saying, hold your pencil right. You can give them the skills to do that. There's also a handwriting article on the website that can give you some more ideas. And if you search handwriting in the store, you'll see all kinds of little manipulatives that work on both the extensor muscles and the flexors. That's the ones that bring them, the hands out and bring them back in and work directly on the cortical opposition between the index finger and thumb. When you do these kinds of things, you get better handwriting a whole lot easier down the road. The last level is level nine and it's called proprioception. That's a big word for just where I am in space, knowing where you are in space. If you don't know, you might step on other people's feet. You might be in their social space that we talked about, or you might have a lot of what we call spillage of information from one side to the, to the other. If you're supposed to just use one hand and your arm and neck and shoulder and, and the other hand is going and your tongue is out, then that's what we call spillage. Those messages are not getting to the place where they're supposed to be without shorting out, kind of like a wire that's got the coating removed and the, it's sparking out of there instead of going directly to where it needs to go. So for more information about tactility and how it affects the rest of development and what you can do about it, you might want to check out one of the previous recordings of the podcast number 19 that was called neuroplasticity and number two that podcast is the neurodevelopmental approach which gives you a good overview of how the brain is organized it first has to receive information from the tactile system and those others before it can perform you'll also learn how the brain receives from the five senses, processes the short-term memory, and stores information 
so that it can be used. I hope you take advantage of the resources that we have there at Little Giant's Desk. And my prayer is that you have more confidence now that you have the power to use the principles of neuroplasticity to make a difference in your child's life. If you stay tuned, you'll receive more of these brain coach tips to make life and learning easier. Next week, we'll be exploring the visual part of the developmental profile and how those hypersensitivities and distortions can cause poor functional ability and often conflicts in the family. Of course, we're going to offer hope for change as well. For now, it's the brain coach signing off and reminding you that neurodevelopment is a dynamic approach to life at any age. So think differently. The solution is not in the problem. See you next time.